Among my many other accolades, I'm considered the world's foremost expert on Noel Edmonds, with tens of thousands of words of academic research under my belt. Noel's whole MO, his entire persona, thrived on his role as king of live television, that most unmissable of genres where anything can happen and inevitably go a bit wrong. But let's go back, before the gunge tanks, before Blobby, before a man died doing a stunt, to a time when he was ruling Saturday mornings instead of Saturday nights. Not yet ascended to throne of prime time's god emperor, many of Noel's early on-screen forays occurred on children's television, most notably multicoloured swap shop, Swap Shop was a precursor to Saturday Superstore, and likewise, almost none of its 146 episodes survive. Once all the original viewers have died of old age, these shows will exist only as oral tradition, their stories passed down around the fire like folklore, about the Messiah, Noel, who shall one day return to save us from damnation. Despite the lack of footage, Swap Shop remains iconic, having aired from 1976 to 1982 to massive audiences. It even span off into a band, with Noel, Maggie Philbin and Keith Chegwin forming a trio called Brown Sauce, reaching number 15 in the charts with the single I Wanna Be A Winner. But we do have one full episode, originally airing November the 5th, 1977. Ever the trickster, Noel subverts the medium right from the get-go. This is BBC One, and it's now time for The Multicoloured Swap Shop. Uh, actually, just before you go, uh, Richard, uh, how are you this morning? I'm very well, thank you, Noel. <laughs> The theme song's a surprising banger, a Saturday morning Woodstock, conjuring images of flowers in gun barrels, and another small and charismatic leader with a beard who refused to play by the rules. And look at him, resplendent with his gorgeous mane, a disco lion, but this is a dialed down version of the man we know, a proto knoll at his most restrained, with no studio audience to prank. Primarily, this is a show where letters are read out, and in doing so, paint a vivid picture of our country past, a window into the lives and minds of a whole generation. And Joseph says, I'd like on behalf of my goldfish, Tony, to thank you for saving his life. Really? When I got up early to watch Swap Shop, Tony was lying on the floor under the television. I picked Tony up and quickly put him in his bowl. Tony is five inches long and four and a half years old. Five inches long? You sure it wasn't a shark? Dear Noel, we had dinner a bit early. Love, Willie. We all do, mate, but save it for the watershed. John Craven's there too, dressed like someone from a 1950s show about moon people. You hear a lot about parasocial relationships these days, which is when you feel like the hosts of your favourite podcasts are your BFFs. But for kids back then, their pretend friends were TV presenters. Before they spent their days calling strangers the N-word over Fortnite, Children love nothing more than sending letters and presents to people off the telly. Regard, how an offhand comment by Noel about liking Paddington Bear resulted in hundreds being sent in. Just look at this magnificent row of Paddingtons. They go on and on forever. And it followed my comment last week that I'm a bit of a Paddington Bear freak. And look, they've even got lovely pyjamas on. There was no data protection and you were free to hold up a child's letter so their full address was visible on screen. Catherine Peterson, thank you very much indeed. She made me a Paddington Bear, a quite splendid little thing. Forget the wiped tapes. There must be a BBC landfill with all the junk they got sent. 
Paddington bear sort of oven gloves for someone with a very small oven? Or are they mittens? Or are they a hat? Oh, they're egg cosies. <laughs> uh, a mug of cocoa from Paddington made out of uh, coloured bits of paper. Thank you very much indeed to everyone. All brought along. He's made his own swap shop hat there. Oh, Says, lovely. Noel Edmonds, that's a present for you. Oh, and look, super. Look at the Line four. But this isn't the freebies Hello. shop. Hello. What, Hello. Can I do? what can I do for you? Well, I've, I've got a swap to make. You, you've got a swap to make. It's Adrian, is it? If you remember from our look at Saturday's Superstore, these shows generally function as a community hub for the audience, a sort of nascent social media. But Swap Shop, that was the first peer-to-peer -peer sharing service. Forget swapping stickers in the playground. Thanks to Noel, kids could now swap anything over the television. Got a space hopper but want a swing ball? Let Keith Chegwin act as middleman. These swaps paint a nostalgic picture of the kind of fads British kids were into. Yo-yos and gonks and... But it's a very environmentally sound system, cutting down on waste. Now, what are you offering? Um, a black and white Polaroid yeah. camera. A black and, and what would you like? Anything. <laughs> Anything? Anything. What, like? The idea of all of these kids out there with their stuff. There is, of course, some in-studio entertainment. Now we've got a, a stirring start to the day. The Thurrock Drum and Trumpet Corps. Nine, two, three, squeak! Arch! All those pseudo-youth army clubs marching bands, cadets and sea scouts. They were massively popular when I was a lad. Every single one of them grew up to wear a poppy the size of a dinner plate all year round and be very angry about footballers taking the knee. This lot looked thrilled to be there. Drum Major, you look very serious. Can you maybe explain what some of these movements mean? Because they, you're not doing that um, just to sort of keep the air moving, are you? Well, that's a bit of showmanship. Oh, that's a bit of showmanship, yes. I know we're supposed to be admiring the display, but I'm very distracted by Noel's tight jeans. Yeah. Now, you are taking part in the Lord Mayor's show, aren't you? Um, yeah. So what exactly will be, you be doing there? Um, well, just marching through, playing. Um, All right, thanks. Yeah. Look how many medals that lad's got. He must have thousands of confirmed kills. Yeah, what, do the, what do the medals mean that you've um, got on here? Well, a few of them are for various awards that I've won, yeah. drum major, then others are for what the band's won. Right. For going the usual celebrity phone-ins, it's Noel himself who takes questions from callers. Hello, is that Noel? Yeah, it is. Oh, that's a... Um, I'd like to ask you... Hang on, hang, 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 hang on! Who are you? Uh, I'd like to ask you yes. what time you get up to uh, do the swap shop. Anything else you want to know? Um, no, not really. No, all right. But what time do you normally get up? Robbed of the context of those hundreds of lost hours. Much of swap shop's running bits are impenetrably weird. Imagine some future survivor of our ravaged planet stumbles on a copy of this. Sarah Merrick? joins my pyjama patrol. My mum was in her night clothes at 10.15 when your programme was on, but she's dressed now. I like the oddball couple and the great ape show. Here we see an early example of Noel's joy at... Oh no! Live TV's going all wrong! Keith? Keith? <laughs> love it, love it, love it! Keith Chegwin's in Blackpool to swap things. Oh, well, you're probably wondering what I'm doing sitting on this donkey. But first, an important safety announcement. Trams, unlike buses, actually run on rails. And if you're going to cross those rails to get to us this morning, please make sure there are no trams coming. Don't forget, you mustn't take anything live. We're not interested in that. Tell somebody you're going and mind how you go. Watch out for those trams, as Keith said. Got to get down to Cheggers and swap this action man for the bra section of the Freeman's catalogue. Ah! Well, you've probably got something in your home which is around about 120 million years old. Yeah, your joke book. What's this here? Hey? Oh, he says he doesn't know I've lost my ass. He said, but he's got another one here. 
be overlooked by the Blackpool Tower there, and it really is an eyeful. <laughs> Dressed like Beano Town Clockwork Orange, Keith does some live swaps. Now, Carl, what have you brought along here this morning? It's a sticker rock. Uh, well, it's a bit big. We want it at a raffle, and we'd like to give it to some charity. Oh, that really is very kind of you, and I'll certainly make sure it does get to a charity. I think it's a very kind thing to actually give a borough rock to charity, and I'll certainly make sure it gets there. Imagine him turning up to the Red Cross or a shelter for battered women lugging that thing. Yeah. <laughs> He's joined by two of Shawaddy Waddy. What's your favourite name? Not anymore, it's not. They've brought along stuff to swap, including an autographed shoe, which has Keith behaving like a man whose homepage is set to wiki feet. One thing that's surprising about Swap Shop is how terribly middle class it all is. While the competitions on 90 Saturday morning shows ask things like, how many Spice Girls are there? On Swap Shop. Well, WH Fox Talbot was a pioneer of photography. In fact, if you go down to Laycock in Wiltshire near Chippenham, there's, a, there's an exhibition there. But we want to know, what does the WH stand for? What? Barring the flighty ones Cheggers gets lumped with, every child on here, be they in the studio, on the phones, or just writing a letter, are a cut above the usual oiks you'd get dropping H's on going live. Not that I'm being classist, but when's the last time a kids show read out a request like this? And she says, for your top ten swap last week, you played Mozart, so please could you play Strauss, Johann, for the chart, please? Even the clips they pad out the time with are more cultured than what we're used to. She is in action in the 1976 Olympics, jumping for Britain in what I think you'll agree, whether you like horses or know anything about them or not, is absolutely appalling conditions. Have a look at this. I think that first fence has gone. I think that brick is off the wall. And woe betide anyone who embarrasses themselves with a lack of education. Dawn Boorman of 86 Blythedale Road, Abbey Wood in London, said on her card, Maybe you can read it there. Sleeping Beauty's real name is Iris Toddy. <laughs> I hate to break this to you, but you're wrong. It wouldn't be Saturday morning without some musical guests. We're very pleased to have the Wurzels here with their own interpretation of the life and times of Guy Fawkes. This should have been the soundtrack to V for Vendetta. Guy Fox and his men hid beneath Big Ben, if you believe it or not. So please do remember the 5th of November, gunpowder, treason and plot. Ah. Unlike the era's usual mimers, they are singing live. Hence why this happens. Close it and... Then what did he explain? He didn't say a word. The Wurzels are <laughs> Silly! The knoll we're familiar with does rear his head in what could be considered an early gotcha, turning the cameras back on the cameramen, who serve up some incredible looks. He smashed right through the fourth wall, just like on House Party. What, what does that do? At the television centre here, we do have many other things going on. I mean, this is the only programme which is actually going out live. Now, we're out of Studio 5, and if we come round here, we ought to be able to do a little bit of snooping on what is happening in Studio 4. Good morning, sir. It's like the chase scene in Pee Wee's Big Adventure, as he wanders into rehearsals for It Ain't Half Hot Mum. They're all looning about in the middle of it. Morning! Morning! Good morning, chat. Hello, Hello, morning. How are you? Morning. Hello, morning. Are you well? Hello, Don't touch me! How are you, Wish he'd done this on Deal or No Deal, walking around Channel 4. Here we are on the set of Naked Attraction. Nice foreskin. But you can't be on this show and not give something to swap. Oh, if we swap, there's no show today. We're in trouble. We don't swap. Very good. Fuck me. That looks like the villain in the next Conjuring movie. Hello, Noel. I'd like to swap that puppet for my haunted Dibbert box, please. But it's the 5th of November, and there's a really important issue at hand. 
Windsor Davis makes sure Noel's on top of it. Yes, oh, yeah. we're, we're doing a big bit on that. Yeah, yeah. We're doing a big... The BBC are taking no chances this year, really hammering home the issue of not burning or blowing yourself up on bonfire night. Of course, as far as safety is concerned, this is an important day, isn't it? November the 5th. And however hard they try, one or two people might well end up doing some silly things today. In today's world, you're never more than 100 yards from someone filming their mate shooting a rocket out of their anus. But these were simpler times. This. Now that is uh, the result of somebody doing something really, really clever. Sticking a firework in a pillar box. box. Now, isn't that brilliant, doing that sort of thing? Actually, mate, it seems like mindless vandalism to me. I'm, of course, being sarcastic because it really is a stupid thing to do. Yeah, so was I, so... Pff, the post office have rescued a singed competition entry and Noel's bloody livid. You are lucky, but every year the post office tell us literally hundreds and hundreds of people don't get very important mail because of stupid individuals who stick fireworks in pillar boxes. I know what I'd like to do to them, but if you see somebody who's doing that, why not report them to an adult or even to the police? Because it really is a daft way of carrying stupid, on. Stupid, isn't it? In the days when any idiot could pop into the newsagent for a big box of gunpowder stuffed into cardboard tubes, firework safety was a necessity. The greatest threat for children of the 70s and 80s wasn't nonces or rabies, but losing your daily Thompson's decathlon fingers to a sparkler. Make sure your child doesn't start November the 6th like this, or worse. Is it any wonder us kids from back then are obsessed with pylons and nosy bonk, raised on superb hauntology like this? What do you got there? Here's a letter from uh, Tanya Rose of uh, Liverpool, and Tanya says, I'd like to tell you about my brother's experience last bonfire night. My brother started to collect dead fireworks after they'd been lit, and he put them in his new coat pocket. Anyway, it was 8.30 p.m., and he realised his coat was on fire. He quickly took it off and stamped out the fire. It just shows how dangerous it can be to collect uh, dead fireworks, or what you think are dead fireworks, and he ruined his new coat. He was lucky that it was only his coat that uh, got ruined, isn't it? Yeah. And here's one from Elizabeth Grundy, who's nine and a half, from Chorley. And uh, Elizabeth says, uh, we have a field at the back of our house and children keep bringing wood for a bonfire. In the daytime, they built a bonfire and when it came night, excuse me, when it came night, they set it alight, which I thought was silly because there were children of three and four years of age. And they lit bangers, which is against the law because they're only ten years of age. If Saturday Superstore was the analogue internet, Swap Shop was local radio, with huge mid-morning matters energy. Most of the letters this week were to do with our film report last week about uh, fairgrounds, because remember we asked if we thought that you thought that fairgrounds were in fact fair, whether you were getting good value for money on the rides and things like that. I think that if you're not getting fair deals, they should be called unfair grounds. Good point, yeah. Robert. <laughs> There's even a funny story. I'm writing to tell you how I swapped my pogo stick for a calculator with a girl called Nicola. First of all, my dad took my pogo stick up to Old Street Station and feeling a bit silly, I can imagine he did, he sat on a bench. Then about a minute later, Nicola's mum came along with the calculator, so they swapped with each other and my dad brought the calculator home to me. Thank you very much, Noel. What a funny story. I think the fair is a waste of money. The rides make you sick and feel a bit funny. The goldfish die within a week. Yeah. The ghost train has become more meek. The only thing I think is real, is worth the money, is the big wheel. And you'd better read this sat, Mr John, or you won't be on Swap Shop for very long. All of Britain is in these. All its hang-ups. Its eccentricities. And she sent us a newspaper cutting about a, an enormous corset. It's been made uh, not for a lady, but for a horse, for a foal, for the front of a foal. It's eternal gender war. Where girls have to wear skirts as part of the uniform. And I think that girls should be able to wear trousers in the winter when it's cold. Have you mentioned this uh, to the boys? No, I haven't. What do you think they'd think about all the girls wearing trousers? Even its proclivity for tall tales. She says, my dad's a policeman. One day, it came over the radio, presumably in his car, that two ladies had been attacked by two chimpanzees. They went to where it had happened and discovered that they'd escaped from a nearby farm. They chased Daddy and his mate into the police van. 
Then they jumped on top of it and ripped the blue light off. Did they? Yeah. We return to the beach, where Chegas once again proves he's a man of the people. How's it going? The seaside. Oh, doing singing again. Please enjoy the weird laugh of this background kid. Skateboarding. Skateboarding? Really? That's quite incredible. I'm doing a bit of skateboarding on the show today, actually. Yes. Yes. Look. Yes. Look. What are they putting in the water there? How are you this morning, Caroline? That's What? You what? Caroline? That's right. What? Caroline? That's right. What? There's the health and safety nightmare of Cheggers trying out some homemade stilts. Right, here we go. Oh! 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 You alright? They always remind me of cheese, you know, Stilton cheese. And the promised skateboard section, containing an exhilarating full minute of Keith Chegwin clambering into safety gear. It's not easy, is it? No. You've not even stepped on the skateboard yet. It's not easy, is it? No, it isn't. <laughs> you know what's really not easy, Keith? Getting through a whole sentence without making that noise. You know the one. No, no. Marvellous. Back in the studio, Noel meets this week's collectors. Is that a young Anne Widdicombe? Then the Wurzels do a number about a bionic cow. Homogenised to pasteurise in bottles and cans of any size. She sure to give you a good surprise. She's nearly the bionic cow. We're off to Cyprus, actually, on, oh, yeah. Yeah, on Monday. Yeah, for the troops. This is what you're fighting for, boys. <laughs> now we just heard Little and Large wanted us on Wednesday for one of their shows, and yeah. unfortunately we're in Cyprus. Oh. Imagine that. All ready to stand on stage with Sid Little, Next thing, you're getting shot at by insurgents. Some people have all the luck. Noel goes through more letters from kids who think they're his mate. I save Paddington bears like you. He's a great little bear. I have a soap of him and I also save soaps, but please tell my mum. And makes an interesting gag about some prizes donated by a Concorde pilot. There's a, I don't know what that is, or oh, a Concorde paper knife. So it all gets too exciting for you, you can end it all. Uh, but the most jarring tonal shift is when John Craven chats to a journalist buddy, a foreign correspondent. When the leftists captured this hotel they seemed confident that everybody had either fled or were dead. Now it seems they were wrong. For some 16 hours later there is at least one, perhaps even three men, either in the hotel or very close to it. Did I just witness somebody dying on Swap Shop? Perfectly normal thing to air directly after Keith Chegwin willying about on a skateboard. Hope that wasn't one of the Wurzels getting mown down. I think Cheggers could do this job. So is it, you know, difficult shooting a big gun at people? <clears throat> oh cripes, I think that bullet's gone right through me helmet. Well I did say I'd give it my best shot. <clears throat> Continuing the telly for Tories, Noel meets show jumper Debbie Johnsy and spends the entire interview absolutely fixated on whether horses should be made to jump in the rain. How often do you have to, to ride in the conditions we saw there in Montreal? What's the problem? That the, the horse just simply can't get traction, it can't get a grip. Well, you, How do you alter your style if it's raining? I mean, so out of them conditions really, it was just unfair to, to ask a horse to jump. In a show noticeably light on celebrity, we do the classic Q&A. Again, the callers are unnervingly posh, each sounding like little newsreaders. Perhaps this is because, genuinely, telephones were still somewhat of a luxury item back then. Of Congleton Road, Scola Green, Stoke on Trent says, I'm writing to ask you, will you please put on more clips about show jumping? And I had to write to you because I don't have a phone. I haven't got a phone number. I'd love to ask her some questions, but we don't have a phone. So I wonder if you could ask for me. I'd like. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. bye. Um...
like going to the shop with your mum and she bumps into a friend. We have to wait as Noel carries on his own conversation about buying some horses to ride around his country estate. OK, that's to keep a really top-class horse. I just want to go sort of jogging around and just go for a ride in the morning. Um, with all the thrill of the London Stock Exchange, the troll girls get a last-minute offer calling in. Hello. Hello. I've got a, a cow troll, if you're interested in it. A, a what? A cow. A cow? Yes. And she knows what she wants. What would you like in return for that, then? Um, I believe there was an extra sketch was there? As the three-hour show comes to a close, there's one final firework warning. Uh, it's November the 5th, of course, and we've got fireworks all over Britain. But uh, be very, very careful, do it safely, and if possible, go to an organised display. Yeah, don't worry. I'm still picturing that boy whose jacket went up. You might think all of this has been weird, but millions of kids, including the ones who grew up to be running things now, sat down to watch this every week and everyone turned out perfectly fine. This is a very normal country and it's all down to Noel. <laughs> Cheers Edmunds. And many thanks to Debbie Johnsey for coming in and to uh, her brother Lee who made that rather nice little rocking chair uh, for us out of pegs. Next week on the programme we've got Josh Kuczynski, a laser expert, we've got the Lord Mayor's show and we've got Barbara Dixon. From Kiss and Cuddle and from me, bye bye. Right. Right. What 